Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. This morning I'm down here at Circular Quay and it's sunrise, it's a beautiful beautiful morning, spring in Australia and there's a bit of cloud cover but it still doesn't detract from the beauty of this time of day, the AM Sydney, which for me is a moment of tranquility and beauty that can't be surpassed by any city, any harbour in the world. What I'd like to do today is share with you a book summary on a book entitled I May Be Wrong by an author named Bjorn Lindbland which was published on the 17th of February 2022 and it's a book that puts together a number of insights, uh, life insights from a man who is a forest monk. And I remember going to an Anthony Robbins seminar ages ago and Anthony Robbins did mention the fact that if you scratch the surface, if you took the time to scratch the surface and delve deeper, everything and everyone is remarkable and interesting. And the author here tells us that the biggest obstacle to growth is not the fact that we don't know something, but the fact that we think we do. When we embrace the possibility that we may be wrong, may be wrong, we open ourselves up to experiences, knowledge and understanding. So uh, this book has a number of takeaways. The key takeaways are number one, to embrace uncertainty, cultivate mindfulness. Number three, let go of control. Four, try and find joy in simplicity. Five, practice compassion. Six, learn from adversity. And seven, seek connection wherever you can. So we'll just go through each of those points briefly and see what we can take away and see what we can learn and see how we can use it and leverage it to make our day, this day, a better day. So the first one is embracing uncertainty. And the author stresses that uncertainty is a natural and a refreshing part of life. And instead of resisting it, we should learn to accept and nav navigate through it, finding peace and adventure in the unknown. It's easy to say, of course, and hard to do. But when it's all said and done, the unknown is where the wow is in your life. Push yourself on a daily basis to be able to lean just outside your comfort zone to ensure that you are consistently and continually growing and developing. Because that's what life really is all about. Each of us have a, a duty to try and grow and develop and do the best that we possibly can with our lifetime, be it three score and 10, 100, 30 years, who knows how long we have, but we all have a lifetime to try and make the most of it. The second point that the author talks about is to cultivate mindfulness. The practice of mindfulness is central to this author's teachings. And he says that by being present in each moment, we can better appreciate life and reduce anxiety about the past and the future. By all means, have a foot in your past and have a foot in your future. But our waiting, our entire wait, should be dedicated to the, to the eternal now because that's really all that we have. All that we have to enjoy is 
the now, the here and now. And I remember somebody saying that depression tends to come from, to those who spend too much of their time worrying about their past and living in their past. And anxiety comes to those who spend far too much time thinking and pre-living their future. The key is to spend a little bit of time thinking about your past and your future, but to spend most of your time living your present. The next point is an absolute doozy, where the author says that we should strive to let go of control. We need to be able to relinquish the need to control every aspect of our lives. Accepting that some things are beyond our control and can lead to greater freedom and happiness by letting go. The key message is to let God do what he is best at doing. And you can be liberated from the need to control and be in control of everything. People who seek too much certainty in an uncertain world are wired for extreme pain. And not only are they wired for extreme pain, but they are also passing that pain onto all that they touch on a daily basis. The fourth point to come from this author is to find simplicity and joy in everything you do. The forest monk emphasizes the beauty of simple pleasures. And I've got a good friend of mine, Johnny D, John DeBassis, who always talks about the power of simple, affordable luxuries that bring simple, immediate pleasures. So by focusing on the small joys in life, we can cultivate a deeper sense of contentment and fulfillment. The fifth point that this author talks about, this forest monk, is to practice where possible compassion. Compassion for others and compassion for ourselves. It's a recurring theme. The author encourages readers to approach life with kindness, understanding and empathy, which fosters stronger connections and a more harmonious existence. The sixth point that comes from this book is that we need to learn from our successes and our failures, learn from our adversity, because at the end of the day, challenges and hardships can be valuable teachers. The author shares that embracing difficulties can lead to personal growth and a greater appreciation of life's blessings. When it's all said and done, our worst days can end up being our best days because they force us to decide, grow and develop. And the last point to come from this author is the importance of seeking, gaining and making the most of connection. Connection to God, connection to yourself, to your soul and connection to others. The importance of human connection is highlighted throughout this book and we are called to build meaningful relationships because it's through these meaningful relationships that enrich our lives and provide support during tough times, reminding us that we are not alone in our struggles. No, life is difficult for all of us. We all have ups and downs. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club and I look forward to doing hundreds more and sharing